great feature in Photoshop is being able to adjust selective regions. If we open up levels and brighten up this image, what you can see is that the flame nebula starts to become washed out. So we'll cancel that. What we can do is select the lasso tool from the toolbar and we're going to draw around the area we don't want to adjust and that will select that region of the image. Then we go to select inverse and now we've selected everything except that bright part of the nebula. And if we do the same thing again, bringing levels up, you can see that we've adjusted this part of the image but not this part of the image. The problem is it's pretty apparent where the border is between those two parts of the image. So what we'll do first is feather the selection. You go to select, modify, feather, and maybe we'll apply a 30 pixel feather. That sort of blends the two selections together. And now if we brighten up the image, we can see we can do some other levels adjustments and we've got a nice smooth boundary between the two regions. You'd never know that that had been selected. And you can do the same thing with any of the other tools like curves. One thing to notice about this image is it suffers from vignetting, which is the darkening of the corners here. And that happens with a large format CCD camera, or sometimes with fast optical systems. And it's something that's very easy to remove in Photoshop. What we need to do is create a gradient. We're going to create a gradient that's exactly the opposite of the background. It's going to be dark in the center and brighter at the corners. And to do that, we need to select the background colors. And we do that using the eyedropper tool. So we're going to select that. Start by selecting the corner of the image and click, and that'll take that color and then move to the center of the image, find a place that's relatively free of nebulosity, hold the Alt key and click, and that'll select that as the background color, and you can see those over here. And then go to the Gradient tool, make sure you've selected the Radial Gradient, and we're going to create a new layer. Go to Layer, New, Layer, and we'll call this Gradient. And we're going to create this by clicking at the center of the image, holding down and dragging out to the corner. And now we've created a gradient that's exactly the opposite of our background. Dark in the center, bright at the edges. And now under layers, if we select a layer blend mode of screen, you can see that the corners have brightened up and we now have this nice even background. It's too bright, but it is at least even. And we can flatten the image now. And once we have, we can go back in and adjust levels. And we can bring up the background to a nice dark color. Now we come to a technique called layer masks and this is where you see the real power of Photoshop. What we've done here is I've created a layered image and it's got five different layers and if we go through and take a look at each of those layers you can see each one is brighter than the last and these are created from three different exposure times. There's a uh, 60 second image, a 30 second image, which has been stretched two different ways, and then a 10 second image that has also been stretched two different ways. So using only three images, we've created five layers, and we're going to blend these together in order to get one nice image that shows the full range of detail. So to do that, we're going to start with the bottom layer, and we're going to select the overexposed region using the magic wand tool. So go up here to magic wand, and just click and it selects that region. And now we need to feather that selection so we have a smooth gradient between each layer. And to do that, we go to Select, Modify, Feather, and a radius of about 40 is probably a good choice. Let's try that. You do have to play around a little bit and see what works. This is definitely as much an art as it is a science. Now we're going to go to the next layer, turn that on. We still have our selection from the first layer. And we're going to click right here. This is to create a layer mask. And when we do that, we've blended the two layers together. So if we turn them on and off, you can see what's happened to the image. And we can continue on up the way. And remember to click back on the layer itself and not the layer mask thumbnail in order to select from that. I'll select this. We can hold shift and click to select another region and do the same thing as before. We're going to feather this selection maybe a little less than the previous one. 
go to the next layer, turn it on, create another layer mask, and so on. All the way up. Feather. Next layer. Create a mask. And finally, the very last region here. Feather that maybe a little less. Select there. And now we have the full dynamic range from the very center out to the very edge. And you definitely have to play around with this a lot to get the exact method right and get nice smooth transitions between layers. But this gives you a basic idea of how it works. And with a little more processing after the layer mask, this is the final result. You can see we've got everything from the bright trapezium area to the very faintest details around the Orion Nebula, all visible in the same exposure. Here we have an image of the Orion Nebula, and we have the usual dilemma of having bright parts of the image and faint parts of the image that we'd like to display at the same time. If we bring levels up and brighten the image to see the faint parts of the nebula, we can see the bright parts of the nebula have become washed out. We could use layer mass to fix this problem, or we can use a plugin called Levelizer. This is a plugin that you can purchase and download from StarZona.com, and it does basically what layer mass does, only it does it in one simple step. Once you've installed it, you go to Filter, Star Arizona, Levelizer. And you can preview the image by clicking on it. It'll show you before and after. And the results usually don't take much adjustment. You do have sliders over here to tune things up if you need to. Under Initial Levels Adjustments, this changes the initial image. Usually you want to have done that in Photoshop first, so that doesn't usually require any adjustment. Mass Level Adjustments, this changes what the layer mask looks like and you can click on show mass levels to see exactly what's being masked off and you can change that if you need to. And then you can go to show final results and you can see that we've really popped out some of the faint detail. Click OK. And now you have a nice adjusted image without having to use layer masks. Another plugin that provides some pretty amazing image enhancement is called Zone Mask. Again, this is something you can purchase and download from StarZona.com. And it works somewhat in a similar way as layer masks in that it brings out faint detail and compresses bright detail into the same range. But it also does a lot of sharpening, enhancing, contrast adjustments. It does a lot all at once in a very simple, simple interface. If you go to Filter, Star Arizona, and select Zone Mask, and usually we can zoom up to 100% to sort of see what's really going on in the image. And again, you can see before and after by clicking on the image to see the previous and then the adjusted image. And you can see that we're compressing the bright detail and the faint detail into a narrower range. It's hard to tell probably in the uh, tutorial window, but it's uh, definitely sharpening the image as well, bringing out more detail, contrast enhancement. And you can fade the result if you need to, if you think it's a little too extreme. You can adjust the radius. This will change the amount of sharpening. If the stars appear to have black halos around them, like they're being over sharpened, you can just lower the radius. If there's not enough adjustment, you can increase the radius. Gamma adjustment, if you lower that, that will appear to flatten the image more. If you raise it, it doesn't do as much flattening of the brightness of the image. And then one thing that you can see is that the whites aren't being quite displayed as pure white anymore. They're sort of grayish, so you can bring up the white point here to brighten things back up. Once you've got the results looking the way you want, click OK. There's a lot to play around with with this filter, but it yields some pretty amazing results.